What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Gerald. It is Sunday, 28th of February, 2016. How is everyone doing? So you want the backside of your weekend, y'all. And I hope this weekend has found you well, able to tap into that inner space inside you that you can truly be rested, allowing your body to recover, your mind to be refreshed, as well as make plans for your week. So how's everybody doing, all right? I hope so, I really do. So I thought I'd do something a little different because I've had People inquire about it, and this video right here are just simple thoughts. So with that being said, I'm just going to point some things out that kind of crossed my mind, and just kind of curious if they may have crossed yours. So. I imagine that this past week, you've seen the yo-yo effect of the weather. No matter where you are, it could be dealing with high winds, heavy rains, even tornadoes. And then some areas, you had snow, ice. Now, does it not, does it kind of make you wonder? We didn't see this kind of temp, this type of stuff 10, 15 years ago. You could actually just look on the TV or wherever you, the local, and it would be either A, it's warm over there. And it's moderate over here. Or it's dry up here. And they're getting all the rain down there. But now, it seems like you see seeing every aspect of the weather represented. And I know that there's some that are about the conspiracy theories and they talk about uh, harp and how suppose that the government wants to learn how to manipulate the weather as a weapon. Well, because I don't know anything about that, I'm not going to speak on that, but I will say this. Man will always strive to emulate the wonders of God. However, everything that man produces comes with an expiration date. I know I'm talking to someone. That's why anything that we do, it never lasts. It only is the same, it's only sustained for a period of time. Why? Because that's how, that was what God wanted all along. We're mortals. We're not immortal. But that's something else. So I've noticed, y'all, that, yeah, the weather has been very, very topsy-turvy. Uh, it seems like what, what this past week, you had a weather jet stream that was on the southeast of the United States that spanned almost the entire northeastern coast. I found that kind of amazing. Not because of the fact that the, unfortunately, the, the loss um, that was from of it. But 
it made me think about what was conveyed a couple of videos back. And I, you know, I believe we are in that season that there's a spiritual reset going on. We already know there's a spiritual battle. We already know that. If you choose to acknowledge it or not. But I really believe divinely that spiritual battle has gotten closer to our earthly realm and we're seeing the effects of it. But you know what really gets my goat though? Is the fact, well, two things. Knowing that you're, you're among someone that is intelligent, that willfully dumbs themselves down to fit in a certain group or affiliation, and y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, this person has no reason to break bread with these people. They willfully do so. That's like waiting for a bad car wreck to occur and they haven't turned the key on yet. But just so happened I had, and I know y'all do this too, uh, this past week had something kind of weird occur. Well, I don't like using the word weird. Something I could not explain. Now, because of the weather, um, has been up and, you know, we've had the yo-yo effect here in Virginia Beach, you know. I mean, I I understand that the process has to be respected so the, so the blessing can be truly valued and fulfilled. I got that. But one thing I, I have started to take notice on, and for those who are who live in the United States, for those who live internationally, I want to ask you this. What's going on with our trees? It seems like the oak trees, um, a lot of the, you know, just trees, they're, they're dying. They're dying before their time. And the reason I say that where I live at, I've been here nearly almost four years. And when I first moved here, uh, the complex that I'm in, there were at least 10 to 15 big trees. Not so big that you couldn't put your arms around it, but big enough, we're talking about a good, let's say, uh, I'd say about 55, 60 feet. Tall enough and heavy enough that if it fell, it would do some damage. And I didn't realize this until uh, last year when I took my trip down to the Smoky Mountains. I try to go down to the mountain. I try to do a pilgrimage to the mountains um, at least once a year. I try to do that. And, hey, I'm a Jeep guy. Come on now. I got to take the Jeep somewhere. Um, but I like, I'm, I'm a big nature guy too. And when I went to the Smoky Mountains, I went to Mount Mitchell. For those who uh, reside on the East Coast, it's not too far from Asheville, North Carolina. It's on the tip of the Smoky Mountains, but it has the highest elevation point for, if I'm correct, for the East Coast. Uh, elevation point is 6,350 feet. And you can drive. You can drive it to the, to the peak. And uh, while I was there, you know, taking pictures if you go if you're connected to my google plus account if you look at my photos that i've posted through my feeds that's mount mitchell 
Um, but I noticed that as far as I could see, I noticed that the foliage, they were white, you know? The tips of these trees were white. And in some areas, you had the elevation of the tree, but there were no leaves. And I, and I, that struck me kind of odd because I was like, well, why is it that the tips of these trees are dying? Looks like they're dying or something. Now, these are 100 plus foot trees, but I noticed this. And so while I was there, I, I, I happened to ask one of the, uh, the uh one of the reps there at, um and they informed me they said this is the effect of air pollution and as well as the roots are being contaminated so now we're talking the nourishment for these trees the water the substances that are found in the soil I didn't see and understand the magnitude of that until I never forgot that because like I said, I took a lot of pictures, you know, while I was on that, on that trip, but it didn't really hit home until I noticed the same effect where, where I live at, you know, how they have that, you know, that, that riddle you learned when you were when you were a child, the one that goes, a tree fell, a tree fell down in the forest, but no one was there. Did it make a sound or something like that? Well, let me tell you what. Right behind my patio, because I'm where I reside at. That was the main reason why I chose my place because I can connect back to nature in the most simplistic way. These trees are right there. And you know what, y'all? When I moved here, there were about, I'd say, how they had this area designed. I want to say there was at least 10 to 15 of them. So you could say that these trees were planted at a minimum well over 10 to 15 years. And living here now, about seven of them have killed over dead. Just kill, I'm talking like in, it was like someone took a, a vial of something and stabbed it injected it into the tree and the tree just died. And you may have seen this. You'd, you're like, okay, I got this tree. Next thing you know, you see the branches falling off. You know you got that tree. The tree may be healthy. You know the tree is healthy because the leaves. But then you notice that, okay, the leaves are not producing like they should or they're late. Now, the weather could be a major factor in that, too. But parts of the trees breaking off like it's termite infested. Yeah, stuff like that. And I really believe that, I mean, like I said, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to come off like, like I'm talking conspiracy because I don't like doing that, but I do think there's a correlation with how our how we're treating our atmosphere. I don't know about y'all, but I seen these last uh, I say at least we'll just say last three to four years, you've seen more and more activity of chemtrails. You remember you remember when you were younger, you might see a jet fly by. And it'll and it'll leave that trail because because of the altitude, but now it's like the sky is the new graffiti, you know, 
because there's always planes coming and going and coming and going, and and rightfully so. But I'm talking, there's a difference. If you got a if you got a jet that look like a 747 or or a 767, and it's spraying, you see the engines are leaving a distinct exhaust trail. It's not because the atmosphere is cold. It's not because of the altitude. Because I know that they actually do have planes that do that, and they say they base it on, well, uh, okay, matter of fact, let's go back two years. Remember when they were talking about, okay, there was, there was an issue with the clouds. So they said, okay, we're going to go ahead and spray this. I know it was like aluminum sulfite and something else. And what, and what it was supposed to do was cause the moisture in the air to get heavy and then eventually cause rain. That was the justification. But I saw a correlation on something uh, that made me think. I happened to be on YouTube and I saw an old video clip that Tavis Spiley was interviewing uh, the artist Prince. And I guess he was promoting that album he had out some time ago. Uh, I think it was Lotus Flower or something like that. But just so happened, he was talking and he mentioned the same thing. He said, he said, he echoed the same thing. He said, well, you know, I remember when I was coming up, you would have maybe one or two planes because they were so high in the air, they would leave a mark. And to as a child, that would be cool cool to see but nowadays it seems like we're doing we're literally playing atmospheric tic-tac-toe well the problem i got with that is we all know that air pollution only travels to a certain altitude because of the if i'm correct the, the seven if I'm correct, it was like it's been a minute since I've been in school, but if I think we got seven layers of the of the atmosphere before space is in. You know, you know. Don't let me go back into my history, my uh, science books. I used to be a science. I used to be a geek back in the day when I was a kid. I used to know all. I think it was seven of them: stratosphere, stratosphere, out atmosphere. I think there's seven. Anyway, but he made me think. Because he said something. He said, I remember growing up and you would notice that. And then next thing you know, the next week or so, you got all this fighting going on. Everybody's argumentative. And, and he said it made him think that, well, maybe this is something being released. I mean, think about it. Think about that, that farmland in Midwest United States, right? In your mind. And the weather's nice and sun's out. And in the distance, you see that guy in his biplane and he is spraying his crops. He's better known as crop dusting. He's doing that to keep the pests from damaging his crops. Right? So my question I wonder is what is the effect that those chemtrails have on us as people? Because the scenario is the same. You don't see no big old commercial planes. I don't care if it's 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 feet up. You know what I'm saying? You don't see that. They're all the way up there. 
almost inconspicuous if you're not paying attention. So it, I, I have to scratch my head and like, well, okay, if this has been going on for as long as you can remember, as long as I can remember, what is the adverse effect? What does it have, how does it affect us as human beings? Is there a side effect? We already know for sure that what goes up must come down because of gravity. So guess what? That, whatever is in the air, has to eventually come to the surface. It's going to be exposed to something that it lands. So it's going to be contaminated, whatever it is. So, you know, I I started thinking about that these last, the other day, I, uh, Wednesday, I found myself, I was tired. I said, you know what, I'm going to make an early night of it, and I'm just going to go to bed early. But then all of a sudden, I found myself not being able to rest. The weird thing is I started getting a migraine. Now, mind you, I don't have ailments physically. And I and I give that, first of all, to God, because I know he's protecting me, but two, common sense, because of the fact that, okay, I only have one body. I got to take care of it. If I don't take care of it, I ain't going to be around long. I already know that I've got to deal with the fact of the damage that I've caused for the last 20, almost 20 plus years of my smoking, I've got to deal with that because there's going to be a price for that the older I get. So, you know, I, I you start to wonder, you think about mortality, you start to kind of connect dots, you know, just like with um, flu season. And isn't it kind of coincidental? One person get it in your, in your job. You do everything in your power not to be exposed to it. You do everything. But within that two-week period of time, somehow, your immune system is exposed. Doesn't matter how. Doesn't matter how much you wash your hands. No matter how, if you walk around with doing the the the, the mask, you know, like Michael the surgical mask. You're doing everything you do. I I really believe that a lot of that stuff is the byproduct of the residual effects of us living on this planet. You know, everybody knows. You wash your hands. You know, germs can't live to a certain degree. That's why washing your hand, closing your mouth is very important. But it seems like as, a, as time progresses, as the years go by, we get, we're getting sicker and sicker. And I and it just kind of, it's really caught my attention. Like, I mean, you go here on YouTube, there are, hundreds of thousands of submissions about about food and about the water and um the effects um the things that are put in food and uh fluoride and how all these things have an effect on your body if you are not aware of what you consume but what shocked me the most was I didn't believe that someone made a point. Someone pointed out, hey, you know, they've got this genetic modified fish or uh, salmon that the FDA has approved for sale. And I didn't believe it until they showed me the. Uh, the story on it. I'm like, 
And it made me think, why would you, why would you sell something when you know you don't know the full scope of the effects of, the, of consuming it? We already know profit is the main goal. But what about the side effects? And then I started that all that did was open Pandora's box for me because I started to watch the videos and I'm like, man, we really have to be conscious on what we consume. We have to take the time to read and not impulsively grab it, grab whatever that product is because of the you know the advertisement on the bag or the advertisement that they try to use because that's what they do 50% of your cons of your consumption is done by impulse buying there is actually a science on how retail stores set their stores up to spawn revenue for those that don't understand every establishment you go to that's commercially ran there is a floor plan on how visually things are set up. That's why when you go to your codes, go to that store near you, you notice right before you get to the register, a thousand and one things are right at the front. You know why? Because they know 50% probability that you're going to grab something and throw it into your uh, basket. That's why they do it. So it is about revenue. But my concern is, is our health. Now, I know I'm not the only one that started to see the differences in, in the anatomy of our children, especially you go back, go back 10 years. I do you one better. Yeah, we'll start there. Go back 10 years and look at the teenagers 10 years ago compared to the teenagers now. 10 years ago, we started seeing a lot of boys that were 14, 15 years old, already six feet. Some already had full facial beards. Mind you, these are middle school. It used to be back in the day, 20 years ago, if you had that one guy in the class and he had a beard, it's because he got kept back. But you know, we always knew that, yeah, because he's the tallest guy and he's going to be playing on the team. Coach is going to come looking for him. And the female looked like little girls. No, not today. The average 13-year-old looks like she's 16. The average 15-year-old looks like she's 19. And the average 16-year-old Looks like she's grown woman. Jill Scott said it best. I think it was off of her debut album. And she, being a poet, spoken word, she made, I don't know if it was the Ode to Razul, what's the song? But there was a, there was a little interlude in that album. And she said, I never thought that I would see young women the way they are. They've got ass and titties and don't know how to carry it. I'll go one back. I'll go back further. 15 years before that, the group, the hip-hop group Gangstar, 
They had a song out. The girls look so good. Chi Ali, who is related to to hip hop legend, rest and rest in peace, Guru. He did a spin-off song, and it said the girls look so good, but they. They said the girls look so good, but their bodies, but their minds not ready. Oh no. And that's the society that we're living in today. It's like, from a human standpoint, we are being pushed. Our evolution is, is, is being accelerated, but our emotional state is not. So I have to look at the correlation there too, because I see a trend. You know what I'm talking about. You got those that are young that are dying to be old, and you have those that are seasoned that are trying to turn back the hands of time. But we fail to realize to, or even acknowledge this one thing. Do you know who you are? Do you know? Because if you don't know who you are yet, you're not going to understand where you're going. You're not going to understand what you're being exposed to on all levels, economically, socially. How about spiritually? Because there is a spiritual war going on, y'all. You got, it's no surprise you got them haters. Some of them are manifested demonic presence working in the vessel of that person. I ain't got to tell you that. You know, you feel it, you see it. It's not your place to be scratching your head and say, I can't believe you said that. Why would you do something like that? That's not by surprise, y'all. There's something working within that person. That's why it's so important ever so now that we ground our feet. We allow ourselves to be vulnerable to ourselves. Don't worry about what's going on outside your door. Because until you get you right, you will not have an impact outside the society. That's why we see the proverbial examples that we do. But it makes me wonder, though, could some of this be environmentally motivated? I do one better. Why is it the things that are healthy for you? cost so much but the things that you don't need are sold on the penny to the dollar i mean think about it somebody shared something to me the other day that kind of blew my mind they said that i guess they tested the mcnugget and the mcnuggets not 100 percent chicken or something I was shocked. But I also believe it's very important to fact check your sources too. Because here, even here on YouTube, on any social media platform, you'll never hear them say, hey, I need you to uh, show your sources. Where'd you get that information from? Or, or put a disclaimer on in your on your description box. This is speculative. These opinions are solely of mine. You know what I'm saying? There's no accountability on that. But you know, it, it just brings me back to this. It just brings me back to this thought 
I wonder what Martin Luther King would say if he was alive today. I would wonder what Marvin Gaye would say when he did that album, the What's Going On album, which I have actually been privileged to have an unsealed copy of that. I've, I've got it. That's one of my keepsakes. I, you know, and I'm a big Marvin Gaye fan. One, for one, he's he's from home. I'm, you know, he's from D.C. So I'm always show love. But when he did that album, he was talking about ecology. Back then, the big problem was mercury getting in the fish. The water being polluted. Now, mind you, everything comes full circle, y'all, because the 70s, the late 60s and 70s, I know a lot of major cities had a lot of trash strikes. You know, they were striking because of the wages and stuff. So you had, I know, historically, New York went through a period of time where you had trash in some areas almost 20, 25 feet up. Uh, just mounds of trash on the street. Mind you, a lot of people weren't working, too. There was a lot of layoffs. So what a lot of layoffs, you had a lot of people that had a lot of, a lot of time on their hands. So in turn, guess what? They were either getting high, getting in trouble, or they were making babies. So it seems like now, even though we're a million miles away from the problems that our elders had to experience, the problems are still there. They're just more covert. They're more passive aggressive. Racism still exists. Bigotry still exists. Infidelity still exists. But unity is limited. I don't know. I will always look at the world in a certain way. I believe that what is right is right. I also believe that everybody's entitled to their point of view and means to express it. But is it productive? Because if it's not productive, what's the point? But we also live in a society where what is taboo is celebrated and what should be held in the highest regard is mocked. It's no secret. You got We live in a world where there 50% of the people in the world don't believe God exists. And they, they make it a point to try to mock, discredit, disrespect his will. And, you know, that's why I believe, you know, not trying to sound offensive, but I try to look at this logically. God has to have a sense of humor. He's got to. Because as much travesty, bloodshed, turmoil that we have done as a society in the last 60, 70 years. I'm surprised that he didn't just say, well, you know what? Since you don't appreciate it, I told you I'm not going to bring water this time, but you guys honestly don't appreciate what I've given you. And life as we know it ceased to exist. I mean, we're living in a society where mortality doesn't have any value. I mean, you got to scratch your head. My queens, you are God's gift to man. You are the wild flower to be held, to be treasured, to be protected. 
there will never be another you. But a man can't honor you unless you honor yourself first. A man can't love you unless you love yourself first. But if you constantly listen to society's viewpoint, they want you to think that a man can complete you. No. He can only validate your state of mind at that moment. That is the synergy that connects you to. But we're stubborn. We don't want to look at things for what they are. And then we feel a certain kind of way when the reality of the seeds that we have planted end up spawning the harvest we did not want. Especially in the minority communities. We quit instead of disagreeing or asking for clarity, what do we do? Anything that generates fear, we automatically take it out. We tear it down. We try to make it conform into the way and ideology of what was predisposed in our development. But you don't see nobody out there saying, well, hey, what about for my babies? What are you doing? Why, why aren't we questioning why things that should not be condoned being condoned? Why? Why is that? If you know it's not right, why are you not? Why are you turning a blind eye? Because it doesn't matter until it's put on your front door. It's more convenient to turn a blind eye and act like it. The pink elephant is not in the room. Oh, no, we won't do that because it takes courage. But that courage can't be forced unless you have integrity in yourself, which means if you're going to have integrity, it must come from a place of having a character, which means you must know what dignity is, that moral compass. But let's call a spade a spade on that one. For the last 50 years, the family structure has been at, been at a, it's been a t under attack. The male has been disfranchised by the female, has been emasculated as a covert means for control. Why? But yet you have some that will use sex as a weapon. But don't you realize the only thing that comes from that is death. I get tired of seeing my queens miss. It just amazes me. Abuse is abuse. But I also know that we live in a world where there are spiritual principalities as well. Why do you think generational curses exist? You try to, you see it, you prove it, you actually see the correlation between what connects you, that connects you from your lineage. You say, you know what? I'd be damned if I'm going to go down that path because that outcome is not what is going to be in my future. I'm not doing it. I'm going to make sure that I take another route only to fall deeper. Don't you realize that devil is real? devil the devil that's what he does he's like that ranch hand and he he's on that horse and he already got the corridor because he got you in there and he's gonna influence you to an end goal if you do not have that conversation with god this thing I've met some people that would make Mike Tyson in his prime seem like somebody that's a cream puff. 
And they have told me, I can do with anything the world deals with but myself. What? Your life is not going to come to pass until you have the courage to go within. Some of y'all dealing with that block. Yeah, I'm going there. You got a hang up that you've been you've been trying to use time as a way to covertly mold it into something that best suit you. You even got people that are in your midst that say, well, you know what? That's just how they are. They're convinced. Well, you know, that's, they've always been that way. But not one time did someone say, hey, what's going on with you? Why are you doing this to yourself? Why is the turnstile of emotion constantly spinning? This ain't the will. To, this is not the wheel of misfortune. Why won't you stop? and assess the truth is you have some people that enjoy they enjoy that backpack they enjoy it your life ain't supposed to be like that y'all it's not But just know this. I've been where you've been. Not everything, but to a degree. And I'm humble enough to let you know that no matter where you're at, no matter what you see, no matter where you're headed, just know I'm praying in your behalf because I know somebody prayed for me. If you're going through a rough, a rough patch right now, just know you can come through it. You can get through it, but it's going to require you to be honest with yourself. It's going to require you to be vulnerable to your emotions, to understand what is being shown to you. Life is not a party, but it is meant to be celebrated in the intended time. I know that needs to go to someone. I think what this boils down to is this. Family, we've got people in our midst that don't give a damn about you. They don't give a damn about your family. They don't give a damn about your generation. They don't care. All they do is see you as a decimal point, a means to an end. And if it means that you gonna have to suffer because your health takes a decline or you have issues going on emotionally and that's the thing if you know something's going on with you why won't you put the same energy and apply it to yourself just like you when you want to go out and do something when there's something that you want to do you don't let nothing stand in your way to accomplish it. So why don't you have that same passion when it comes to your happiness? What about your truth? Do you not deserve to feel emotionally safe? Because I know some of y'all are starving for that. You say to yourself, I don't need to be known by everybody, but just, I just need a couple of friends. Someone that I know that is going to have my best interest, even when I don't, that is going to pick me up by the bootstraps and tell me, hey, this ain't the way. Hey, you might have missed this. Let me let you know. They do this because they unconditionally love you. They don't love you for benefit. They love you 
because you have earned the right. But I also know we live in a society that people can't even look themselves in the mirror and tell themselves they love them, love themselves because they feel a certain kind of way. Why? Because you lack intimacy. That was the environment you were reared in. That's why so many boys that are growing up like men, growing up to be men, fall short. But the penitentiary ain't going to tell you that. They love that. Oh, you fell short. Yep, I got room for you like Motel 6. Because they know that's free labor. Oh, yeah. Some of the furniture and knickknacks you see in these stores come straight from the penitentiary system. You wouldn't know that, though. And for those who don't believe me, go Google it yourself. Some of the food that is sold in some of these grocery stores, guess what? These are funded farms. I ain't got to fact check it. Google it. But not to stray from my point. Family, we need to take care of ourselves. Not everybody that wants to have access to your life has your best interest. And your family are not exempt either. Do not get it twisted. Some of y'all already know that. It's like, you know, they were supposed to be my mentor and inspiration, but they met, they didn't have, you know, you could tell. He's like, you get more love and appreciation from a stranger than you do the people that you live under the same roof, break bread with, and they don't even have the courage to tell you why. It's very simple. It's because they have the same hangups that you're feeling, and they have not mastered it because it requires them to be truthful with themselves. But guess what? We are what we're shown. That's how we learn. We learn through mimic and repetition. I know I'm talking to someone. But you sitting over there saying, well, you know what? That may be the case, Gerald. I'm intelligent. I'm, I have my looks. I'm articulate. And I don't need nobody else. But yet, you suffer in silence because deep down inside, you long for your other half. I know I'm talking to someone. And every time you took it upon yourself to say, well, you know what? If anybody gonna do it, I'm gonna do it myself. And what do you do? You get hurt. You get embarrassed. I ain't gotta tell you that. Think about that last person you was with. What did they do to you? They didn't even deserve to hear you breathe. But that's what love is? No. Had someone had the dash, they said, well, Jerry, you know, when it comes to love, love to love, you got to have pain. Really? I don't believe that. And I'm not saying that in regards to turning a blind eye. I believe what you're not witnessing is being yoked. Two people walking common should go in on common goal, good or bad. But if you have two people going in two different directions, how far are you going to get? The only thing you're going to get is conflict. James Baldwin once said in a poem, I never forgot it. He said, love is a battle. Love is a war. Love is all about growing up. Well, how can you truly say you are grown if you don't know God? Hmm? But if you keep allowing your outer world to influence your, in, your inside, your inner peace, you're not going to be at peace. I mean, think about it. 
and I'm going to get off the soapbox. Seven years ago, you didn't see no lawyers on the TV hitting you with this. Do you suffer from this? Does this happen? If so, call us. We have a lawsuit. Come on. But you quickly see other advertisement out there, sir, and they push the positivity, say, yeah, I, 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 I feel like that. I'm going to try that. Don't you realize what they're saying is, hey, we need some people to try this product. So somebody got to play the guinea pig. Just think about it. The lawyer wouldn't have a job if everything was right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So wherever you are, if you take anything from me, from what you just heard, just take this. You will never fulfill your dreams by running from yourself. It does not matter if you move away, drop people out of your life, bring people in your, in your life, move in different circles. It does not matter. None of it. Until you unconditionally love yourself. Because then you'll have the foundation of understanding the difference between what lust and love is, but also understanding what want, desire, and need is. See, anybody can desire, anybody can want, but the things you need, they're custom tailored for you. So don't give up on yourself. If anything, question what is being given. If it does not spawn growth, if it does not spawn clarity, if it does not show inspiration to define who you are, I ask you this, why are they there? Why are you there? Because we already know. An opportunist does not need your help to expose themselves. But it does require the courage for you to see them for who they are. God is praying for you. You know I am. I see your worth. And for that, for that, for that. It helps me discern mine. How long are you going to let that depression, that apathy that you've been struggling with to go unquestioned? Just like they say in the medical field, what's wrong with a second opinion? The worst thing that can happen is they validate you got it right. You good. Or they can show you something new. Remember, the people that genuinely will have your best interests, if you don't learn anything about in your life, just know that the people that genuinely have your best interests don't move an agenda. They only validate where you are. Be blessed, y'all.